Did you like that? Yeah. <laughs> hey, what's going on, guys? It's Seth here, and if you guys like that epic intro made by Crazy J Jason, check out his channel. Link in the description. Uh, I don't think that's the name of his YouTube channel, but that's the guy. That's his. It's his Minecraft username. So if you want to check him out, go right over there. He made that intro all by himself. I highly suggest uh, getting your own intro made by him. And this is my uh, first top five, so let's see what we can do. It's gonna be the top five things that I think Black Ops 2 did right. So let's jump right into it with the score streak system. The score streak system was a revolutionary system implemented in Black Ops 2 that allowed players to earn points for literally everything in call in uh, a multiplayer match. For uh, getting an assist, capturing a point, getting double the points when uh, killing people while capturing objectives or defending objectives. It was a pretty well balanced system. That's why it's at a number five spot. Jumping into number four right away, we got the new HUD, or heads up display, whatever. The new HUD was amazing. The way, uh, not really a new HUD, but like the, the way, the design of the HUD. Uh, it was just, it was, the corners were good, the way that everything popped up on the screen was very nice. Uh, the way that the domination points were circles, they pop up in the middle of your screen and just, uh, tell you your progress instead of, uh, it used to be like on the bottom or something. I don't even know. But that and the little picture you get when you uh, do something. For example, like if you got a kill, you get like one shot kill or revenge, savior, all those epic things. And the uh, kill streak counters. They have every five kills through uh, 1 through 30. So five being bloodthirsty and 30 being nuclear. After nuclear, you would just earn uh, unstoppable at every kill. And it was an amazing new way of uh, counting uh, what kind of kill streak you're on, and that's why it landed at our number four spot. Let's move right into number three. At number three, we got the gun level system. The gun level system in Black Ops 2 was different than Modern Warfare 3, but at the same time, kind of similar. It was similar that you would earn attachments through gun levels, and you get gun levels through getting gun kills and pretty gun challenges, you know. But it differs that you can't earn camos that way. That used to be the way you'd earn it. Modern Warfare 3, you just get a bunch of kills and you unlock camos. But in Black Ops 2, you'd actually have to do things like uh, 50 one sh 100 one shot kills with the sniper, uh, same thing with shotguns, 100 headshots, uh, the usual headshot challenges. But if you wanted to get gold, you would need to get up to Cryptic Typhoon, which was 100 headshots or 100 one shot kills, whatever. And then you'd have little challenges like 150. Kills without attachments, 150 kills without perks, 10 revenge, 10 bloodthirsties, 10 long shots, uh, stuff like that. And then, after you complete all of those, you would get the gold camouflage that you see in the video right now. And then, if you wanted to get diamond camo, which is a secret camo, you need to get gold on every gun in uh, that class. Like, if you want to get diamond snipers, you need gold on all the snipers. And I have. I'm, I'm uh, happy to say I finished Black Ops 2 with zero diamond guns. I mean, I was pretty close. I almost had, uh, I almost have assault rifles diamond, but I need like two more guns, but whatever. Let's move right into number two. Number two is gonna be the maps. The maps of Black Ops 2 were all amazing, with the exception of like a select two, like Magma, Hydro. That's kind of it. Those are the only really two bad maps in Black Ops 2. Otherwise, every other map is pretty good. My favorite map of all time in Black Ops 2 has to be Frost. The newest, uh, in the uh, last DLC, it was, it kind of felt like uh, Berlin Wall. Which, uh, that was one of my favorite maps ever. And I'm going to be doing a uh, top 5 Black Ops 2 maps uh, sometime in the future, so look out for that. And all the maps overall pretty good. They all had a fast-paced feel, no really long-range map except for like drone, but still that played really well in Crown War and in uh, Team Deathmatch or something. But, uh, yeah, all the maps are pretty balanced. Uh, I guess Nuketown was kind of unbalanced because of uh, Black Ops 1 spawn system, but Nuketown is amazing. Oh, here's if it's unbalanced. Alright, so maps number two, let's get to number one. Numero uno is going to be the Pick 10 system. The Pick 10 system is the creative class system used in Black Ops 2. If you don't know that, you're obviously an idiot for watching this video. But, besides that, 
the Big Ten system was amazing. It allowed everybody to make whatever kind of class they wanted. They weren't restricted to what perks they used. If you wanted to have a perk, two perks from one category, you could. You'd slap on that wild card. One of three attachments, slap on that wild card. One of two attachments on uh, secondary, wild card. Two secondary grenades, wild card. It was the, the most customizable carrier class system to date, and it's amazing. It's uh, uh, Call of Duty Ghost is gonna have something like it, but uh, not not as customizable. Uh, I think you could uh, get rid of your secondary weapon for a knife, but not sure. So, guys, that was my first top 10. Be sure to deep fry that like button, subscribe for more, and I'm happy to say that my video three days ago was completely inaccurate. I don't have 50 subs. I have 53. Boy, double think this overload and. I'm gonna end this video right here. Don't forget to press that like button. Subscribe for more. I will teach you guys next video. Bye.